welcome back to the Lakeside Productions YouTube channel. In this series I'm repairing a 1940 seaplane tender and repairing it back into a liveaboard which it was converted to after World War II. The boat is 40 foot long, constructed of double diagonal mahogany and oak ribs. So starting back working in the V-Bert, there are supports for the four cabin windshield. These are on the port and starboard side. On the interior, the plywood cabin sides are then secured to these. I was hoping to get these out intact, but unfortunately they were so rotten that this was not possible. My father held a weight up to the exterior of the plywood so I could then hammer out any copper or grip fast nails. So seeing as this wood was laminated and the second piece that I'm trying to remove was actually had great purchase, it wasn't as rotten as the first, uh, I was not actually able to get the screws out or any of the grip fast nails this way by hammering them and I had to use a combination of both cutting and chiseling to remove the wood. I decided to use teak here and laminate up two lengths in the same process as what was done before but this time going with the harder timber of teak and it did need some planing to get it down to size to match with the original. So angle grinding any remaining screws or copper nails and of course removing them from the outside as well and usually I would just use a, a punch for this, hammer this through and my father could catch them on the far side. So I also removed the windowsills or the shelf in the interior of this windshield and there was kind of three sections here. I noticed that they were rotten closer towards the actual glass or the windows so this could be due to moisture or condensation buildup or from leaks through, through the windows over the years. So it was a good thing to remove these and I'll actually, you'll see, I will adapt uh, and do a much bigger shelf because the beam that runs underneath the ends of these uh, kind of deck planks that run into the interior directly under the windshield or under the windscreen is, is rotten, it has dry rot. So I'm gonna remove that and I'm gonna make it much more stronger and also bring it out further so it allows us to put in a bigger shelf unit in the Vibert. It's also great to see that the ends of these deck planks are nice and dry. You know, there's no sign of rot and they're good and strong. So it's nice to actually reveal some timber. You, know, you cut out the rot and it didn't get down that far. It only affected the plank on top, which was the shelf in this case, um, which is a great sight to see. So I'm finally getting around to a job that I was meant to do for quite some time. An easy job, but a job that needed to be done nonetheless. And that was fixing the wheels on the sliding doors to the entrance of the boat. So to the entrance of the wheelhouse cabin. And of course, you know, how many times do I go in and out of these doors on a daily basis? These needed to be set up correctly. So now I'm getting them done. So what had actually happened was the wheels were actually wearing on the screws that were securing the rail, the sliding rail for the doors and they'd worn down, it actually worn them quite rough and that's why the doors were not sliding well, were not sliding efficiently. So I actually replaced the, the wheel itself and the bracket that the wheel is on. So I actually replaced the bracket and the wheel itself. So I just bought those new, you could buy four of them. You buy them in a pack of two, of course, for sliding doors. Um, and originally they'd be used in houses, you know, for your sliding wardrobe or anything like that. Uh, and that's obviously what my parents had gotten, you know, 30 years ago. And I was lucky enough to find them again locally or within the country, which is fantastic. And I was able to get those and replace them.
so as the, the doors were never sliding correctly, it also allowed for the actual mount to move over the years. The screws uh, also became wrong, you know, and within within the actual hole that was drilled for them, it come loose over the years. So without messing around with this, all I did was I drilled a lot of new pilot holes for them, put in the screws, but first I scored the actual wood where the new brackets would sit and then I just epoxied them in place. And I know that this will last a long time. And I think there's no need to go as far as using bolts and washers here on the far side, bolt and nut and washer. You know, if anything happens over the years where they do come loose again, I can resort to that. But I think the epoxy is gonna last a very long time. So my father helped me remove the sliding rail for these doors and that allowed us to then pre-drill the aluminium rail and the countersink as well into the Remember what you did. You the rail itself and then to drill new pilot holes or to get them to use bigger so screws. Uh, basically that the, the shaft will be bigger on the screw and it will allow it then to get better purchase in the wood. And there's this little shim of plywood that beh sits behind this which allows the rail to sit out further than the kind of beam, that the wooden beam that sits behind it for supporting the wheelhouse. That just worked perfectly. It was a lot of work to get them in because the problem is, you know, you're doing a lot of work on a boat with pre-existing wood, you know, like whereas where the boat was built, obviously this was an afterthought as well. It's not original design, the wheelhouse to her 1940 build and construction. But again, you know, they obviously Ready? secured these beams in first then you put on your roof planks. But now we're putting in a rail and we can't actually get good purchase. The screwdriver in our hand gets in the oh, way right, yeah. of getting those screws in place, but we just had to work through it, and it was awkward, it was as hell to get it in place. But we just powered it through, and we got enough purchase um, and made sure that those screws kind of countersunk. Because again, they're driven in at an angle, you, we couldn't get them in level, but we got them in with that countersinking of the, and, and pre-drilling with the countersinking of the aluminium, it allowed it to, us to get it in far enough that the wheels would slide without interfering with the screws. So it worked out better than before. So I held up the new teak supports for my father's that then pre-drill and countersink through the plywood on the far side. I also applied a thin layer of just neat epoxy to this plywood and so that would soak a little bit into the plywood itself. Yeah. And then right I in also place. applied thickened epoxy using microfibers to the actual yeah, teak itself happy? and that would guarantee a super strong bond as well as of ah, course using strong. screws to help with that. Oh yeah, perfect. Hang on, the front, hang on. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like. So you might have seen in an older episode, I actually removed strips of wood here in the bow, which are just pine. 
Um, so I replaced them with mahogany strips, and this was made from old furniture that was going to be thrown out and discarded. So it's great to see lengths of timber have been put in a second life. To get a second life out of it is just fantastic to, to recycle old wood. When I'd replaced these with the mahogany strips, I had bought brass pins or brass nails. And as advertised, I thought they were brass, but later down the line, I'd noticed I'd seen some leaching. So of course, at iron sickness, and we were seeing that they were rusting through to moisture, I actually varnished these strips of wood and they looked great and then it dawned on me that these were advertised as brass and they weren't of course so again being cheated like that is never a great sight to see but it just goes to show you you have to double check or triple check these things and so what I'm doing is I'm removing them and trying to get them out intact and actually the one on the uh, port side cracked on me I, I couldn't get it out the way I would bonded it in with the uh, Sikaflex and probably casking my wood glue so I made up a new one and the same, this one I repurposed, I just used a heat gun that removed all the varnish nicely with the chisel then to scrape it off and gave them a nice little sand with this uh, multi-purpose tool which my cousins got me, which is absolutely fantastic. It's a great present and thank you guys, I, kinda pre I appreciate it. It's been seriously useful in a lot of these jobs, um, especially for places that you can't get into with bigger tools and, and it, it's fantastic for getting to hard to reach places and there is a great purpose for this tool so thank you guys so much for this so for the multi-purpose tool i changed it out from cutting and i just put on the sanding attachment and that worked great for getting the strip uh, sanded down nicely so i pre-drilled and countersunk so that this uh, mahogany strip could take f uh, brass flathead screws and it worked perfectly i found a, a lovely screw a nice long screw but also thin where the head was not too big and it worked perfectly and making sure to, to counter sink enough that I can fill it afterwards and my plan is to go with epoxy here guys but I'm gonna also ha run into an issue where uh, obviously the counter sink is not quite big enough to take a dowel or to take a plug so how would you advise that I I fill the, the counter sink the, the counter sunk hole for the screw head um, I could make up a mix of epoxy and maybe sawdust again you're gonna kind of see it I would like to epoxy these strips and it would just look nice to see that and as well on the, the wheelhouse cabin corners it's also going to be done with these mahogany sections so it would be nice to, to show that to really bring out the, the wood grain and to show a hard timber like mahogany. So that's all for this episode guys, I hope you did enjoy it. I must apologize for not uploading frequently, but I have gone part time now with my film work. So it allows me to put more hours into the boat and in return get videos out to you guys sooner. So thank you guys for the continued support, I do appreciate it. Please do subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and leave a like, that would really help push my videos. I appreciate all the comments from you guys helping me along the way, sharing your expertise from your boat projects, from your restoration work, you know, for anyone that has experience past me and I've learned a lot and a thing or two from your comments. Thank you so much. I also have a PayPal link in the description below if you feel like further supporting my project there. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.